Oh, damn. Okay, I can understand Kurt because he listened to a lot of weird shit. But. Uh. Yeah. I never find him home. I go to his house, knock at his door. Frank Zappa called this his second favorite album. Bro, of all I can't. Time. I just know. It's an aptitude which should be its greatest weakness, ends up being its greatest strength. It definitely makes it one of the most unique I'm albums in the world. Something. I mean, I'm definitely feeling I like I'm listening like, to Captain B for while I listen to this shit. But, um. This is yeah, this like is. That. I mean, it's. Look at like that. Rating uh, distribution, dude. These guys really hated it. Better than this shit. Here. I think it sounds <laughs> terrible, but I also am somewhat entertained understand. by it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I was just. Well, I like oh, yeah. Donda for bringing a lot so of the I best Kanye songs South in a Park long time. It's hard to look past the television. I it's not an unlistenable song, but it's probably head. the most amateurish track I've heard yeah. on a major artist release, let alone the legendary producer like Kanye. God the damn it, I have one song like God damn it. can make an <laughs> FL studio in five minutes, and I couldn't believe my ears when I noticed the hi-hat of the original Pop Smoke recording is audible in the background, but only when he's singing. I get that it's a posthumous tribute that Kanye that couldn't weird. get him in the studio, but come on. Yeah, no, this... It's ridiculous, but he did improve it. He uh, he came out with Television Two, which actually oh, ended yeah. up Morgan, uh, fixing it, uh, a lot of the almost... original problems. Oh, uh, you you go. On tele- <laughs> go for it by oh, Corey Feldman. You gotta hear it, man. It feels like a delusion. <laughs> no, trying to stay hip with the youth. Uh, next level stuff. No, he's this gonna song play also it. Features the legendary Snoop Dogg. Um, okay, yeah, don't bro- like this artist. Yeah, hey, you in. never heard this guy, but. He's got a bright taste in music, and I love his shit because he basically just suffers himself with all these songs. Yeah, so, of course, Corey and Feldman, we all discovered the one Corey Feldman it on from, uh, America, from and she was Santana like, opening the wormhole of his stuff. And uh, well, he was just song, freaking course, dancing uh, in a trench coat with a actually, bunch of women on the stage. A few times. Yeah, it's Looking a like Drake of the 99 Dragons and shit. Hell no. There's a cover for you, Morgan. I can't... <laughs> Okay, I know Snoop Dogg agrees to a lot of shit, but at the same time... The <laughs> Bruh, I can't. Plus, look at the way the art was made. It yeah. looks cheap. Doesn't it? Oh yeah. I mean, kind of a spoiler, Heather. All grindcore art looks cheap as hell, and this looks Not as like... cheap as this. Well, I mean... At least, oh, hell, with grindcore art. I'm not even kidding. There's way too much more blood and guts and shit and more raw-ass photos. And this looks like a step up from all that. Maybe we should get back to traditional graphic design when a lot of album covers uh, used to be really interesting. I mean, hell, you've seen my album covers. Well, you're just starting out, so you have to use what you can. Corey Feldman is somebody who... Maybe you think he would be able to afford something a little better, but well, then again, I'm not going there, so I mean, straight up, but if I can. Oh, wait, did you see my uh, requests? How the frick do I have people follow me on Spotify? Anyway, or SoundCloud, yeah, whatever. Oh, uh, I'm thinking I gotta get a look at it when Discord is up. The hell, okay. I can prove it. There you go. <laughs> Society wants the Mary Anime Cruise. Okay, uh, go to the uh, okay, the one that uh, your movie sucks dot org. Neil Breen. Wait, let me look at that one because actually I've got to move the freaking. Uh. In now, uh, the wait, what was I going No, not that. Shit. Uh, damn. Ah, my brain is fried. Happens. Wait. Your movies. Okay, there we go. Uh, Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's just freaking play this because. Fucking A. Oh my god. Where are these guys coming from? Yeah, I don't know why it, it just... 
This guy does everything in his movies, and they're weird, and you'll, you'll Fateful see. Fateful Findings is a work of sheer brainness. This masterful film was directed by none other than Neil Breen, a man yeah. who seems as though he was plucked straight out of a Tim and Eric skit. Hi, thanks for checking out my crowd. What the? Site. <laughs> okay. My name is Neil Breen. Okay, at least Tim and Eric are funny. This dude... I don't know what You'll this problem is. Oh, oh. I'm a filmmaker. It's a sci-fi, a sci science fiction drama. Twisted, uh, heck? dirty, dark, <laughs> edgy. Bro, oh, you got the sh the budget of my show. And that's it is sad not to say. a midnight movie. It's a legitimate mainstream Full length Bullshit. Film. Mainstream? I shit you not, this man is the next big thing and so bad that it's good filmmaking. Quite honestly, the biggest reason I'm reviewing this film is because not enough people know about him. Not a single one of his films has even broke 500 ratings on IMD Breen. And that's not okay, America. For shame. For shame, America. So sometime man, last year, someone tweeted me suggesting I add fateful findings to my watch list. And I did. When I finally got around <laughs> to watching it, it was one of the most magical film experiences of my entire life. There was a point in the film where I was oh, laughing so, so hard that my roommate from downstairs had to come up to my room to see what the fuck was so funny. I think this scene kind of speaks for itself. I'm gonna shoot this damn car up full of holes! No, no, no! <laughs> Oh, uh hi, -huh, Mark. Neil Breen, a.k.a. God, has been making films since 2005, and thankfully he is just starting to get what a bit of attention. Shirt, Red Letter Media covered his first film, Double Down, in their Best of the Worst series. So as soon as I saw their video, I was like, holy shit, he made the same mm -hmm. movie twice. Dead Wife? Magic rock? An unnecessary amount of old laptops? Hacking? It was at this point that I had realized there was something very special here. So I promptly bought every single one of his films. They showed up exactly how you see them now. Cracked jewel case, but hey, at least it's Breen autographed. Also, in the spirit of his own movies, the actual process of purchasing his films is needlessly convoluted and difficult to understand. If you want to purchase Fateful Findings, you just buy it on his website. But if you want to purchase Double Down or I Am Here, now, you have to click the link to purchase Fateful Findings, but then add special instructions to the seller to specify which movie you actually want to buy. And nowhere on the website does it say this. I literally would not have known how to purchase two out of three of your films if I didn't happen to see this post on the Fateful Findings Facebook page. So Neil Breen, if you're watching this, could you maybe update your website so that people who want to buy your movies can understand how to buy your movies? Or is the actual process of buying your movies just a metaphor? Now I'd already seen Fateful findings so I could attest to the fact that it's a perfect movie to watch with drunk friends. So naturally I invited right, some people over for a viewing in the hopes that I could record some genuine reactions. What I didn't realize however is that we would stay up all night watching all three of his films and I gotta say this trilogy is quite the holy trinity. A delicious three breen salad if you will. So before we get into fateful findings let me give you a quick rundown of his first two films starting with Double Down. So first of all if you haven't seen Red Letter Media's breakdown of this film you probably should watch Watching everyone lose their shit while Rick Evans desperately tries to explain the plot is probably the best thing you could watch to set your expectations for this masterpiece. This movie is absolute fucking nonsense. I would say a good 25% of the movie is literally just stock footage, and the rest of the movie is just the same scenes happening. Or at least my ass happening over and over again. It's seriously as though he filmed several takes for each shot, then later edited his movie together only to find out he had 25 minutes of usable footage, and then just decided, hey, what about those other takes that I didn't use? We could just use those and then I'll have a feature length film. It seriously feels as though that is a likely possibility. I swear to God, he runs up that mountain like 30 fucking times. Watch, look at this. Neil Breen. Neil Breen. Neil Breen. He did everything! <laughs> what? Bloody nun. Make up in here, nun. Bruh. <laughs> this is the shit I used to do to my credits in my film classes. Well, I mean, it's honest, though. 
everything that yeah. nobody did. Four years later in Neil Breen. Yeah, I would have gotten more creative with it. I would have just said, lighting, Jabba the Hutt, um, freaking hair and makeup, Gwen Stacy, freaking, um, I don't know, Chad Kroger, the janitor. Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> he deserves it. Breen releases his second feature film titled I Am Here. Now, now this film was the last one we watched that night, so there weren't that many people left. But that didn't stop it from being mind-blowingly hilarious. He's already got the stigmatum thing going on. They're making fun. Those are motherboard chips. So with Neil Breen being a super intelligent hacker assassin in the previous film, he decided to make his next character even more omnipotent. And I mean, how much more powerful can a character oh. get without just turning him into a Sabrine being? In this masterpiece, Neil Breen plays alien Jesus, kind of. Once again, this film is quite repetitive, but at least it's a little bit more comprehensible. A little bit. So basically, Neil Breen created all the planets, and he comes back to Earth only to be disappointed in how shitty human beings are as a species. Bruh, you you see, not Neil Jesus. Breen is the ultimate moral authority, and he really likes it when people are good, and he really doesn't like it when people are bad. And the movie really feels as though it needs to emphasize which characters are good and which characters are bad. So the only characters you'll ever see are either exaggeratedly kind or exaggeratedly evil. Ah! What the hell, man? The security was there. <laughs> That's just not right. What? Ah! <laughs> His ass started bleeding. Wait, like when what? it touched him. Bruh. It's pretty much the Travis about touchdown is more badass than everybody you. around him. Interlaced with yeah. pandemic shock and terror levels of political commentary. Now that we've paid off our fellow elected representatives in the legislature. That environmental solar panel development bill will fail next week. So because oh, the nice corporate ready. businessmen Fuck sabotage you. solar development, this girl this gets paid off. Thing. So how are you supposed to feed that fake baby now? Perhaps she should movies. train to become a military <laughs> oh, sniper. Oh, no, instead her twin oh, sister movie. says she can oh, hook movie. her up with a stripper oh, slash freaking, escort oh, job. Oh, so she takes her to this American gang sniper. filled with weirdos who only ever seem to stand around with their guns in the middle of the fucking road. And man, let me tell you, they are quite the immoral people. I get her first. No! Oh yeah, Helen. No! Uh, Ricky Barnes' case got dismissed. Okay, well. <laughs> So later, the wheelchair man sees that the fake baby dropped something. Man, if that isn't a good deed, I don't know what is. Neil Breen, why don't you work your alien techno Jesus magic? <laughs> this is literally the second film in a row where Neil Breen cures someone's cancer. So now the girl's twin sister decides she will also start hooking, and her boyfriend decides he will start stealing cars. But the gang gets mad that he's stealing cars on their turf, so they kill him in a very gritty and realistic way. Then Bruh. they show her the body for some reason. <laughs> what? <fun. laughs> this damn piece that of was garbage! So fake. I know. <laughs> Bruh. Uh, just... Alright, Justin. So now the gang finds out that okay, there's an undercover the one cop looking convincing them. In So this. naturally, they give him the <laughs> most epic beatdown ever captured on film. Yeah, never mind. They're the worst freaking gangsters I've ever seen. <laughs> Bruh, Even NWA would like tell you to toughen the hell up. <laughs> they really putting in the Rocky music. <laughs> yeah. No, not the I'm doing that comedy. So naturally, Neil Breen steps in by freezing everyone in time to save this man. And then he crucifies them Home Depot style. Now, obviously, oh, after that point, his work is done. And he leaves. Oh, and not before some other lot. really weird shit that I don't understand. What draws you to those kind of images? I mean, baby heads in the desert? Uh, no, straight up. Them on the cross has just made me think of the Monty Python song. Um, I'll leave it up to the audience oh, to the little heads in the ground. Uh, the, the surreal quality of those. What do you mean, John? <laughs> How is there an audience? 
after because I just want it means whatever you want it yeah. to be. <laughs> I'm not Only because to they're what to interpret the film. Uh, I'm telling curiosity. you what I've read it is more than one meaning. Well, I mean, also you never second. know either. Free wine for everybody at this movie. Well, thanks for stopping Settles by, you Neil Breen. You were too good for this planet. Just sign these waivers. <laughs> stop our beats and stop music.net. And last but yeah. not least, we have the masterpiece known as Fateful Findings, starring Neil Breen. In this film, he tones down the narcissism oh just a tad and plays an actual human being instead of an alien yeah, super Jesus. Show, Although he still has superpowers bestowed on him yeah, from a magical yeah. rock, yeah, yeah, and he man. does spend the whole movie being morally superior to everyone around him. He's pretty much the only character that's not a scumbag or drug addict. Well, so the movie starts out Jesus. with more free play music. Yay! <laughs> Use not Juanito either. <laughs> we then see a storage locker and a big ass book that I guess someone's just sprinkling glitter over top of. We then see two kids running through a field and they then walk past what appears to be a repurposed prop from Double Down. A ram skull. Why the hell do I just want her wait? Hold up, let me get the earlier. He's superior to everyone around him. He's pretty much the only character the that's shot. not a scumbag or drug addict. So the movie starts out with more free play music. Yay! What's this kind of shot called again? A good one. <laughs> we then see a storage locker and a big ass book that I guess someone's just sprinkling glitter over top of. We then see two kids. Okay, I ever make an intro to MCTV, I'm finding this field and I'm running through it in a fucking wedding dress. I don't care. Running through the field and they then walk past what appears to be a repurposed prop from Double Down. <laughs> they then find a mushroom that turns into a treasure. A treasure? Damn. So now the girls She's moving stoned. away and they have their final goodbyes as awkwardly as possible. So this kid grows up to be Neil Breen and we see a shot of him talking on the phone with his wife. And by that I mean he's not saying anything at all but the way they filmed her makes it seem as though that's what's supposed to be happening. Oh fuck! <laughs> So he got hurt pretty bad, and now he's in a room that's supposed to look like a hospital. This is definitely someone's house. <laughs> oh, yeah. You've never been to a carpeted hospital? I have those blinds. I have those blinds. Yeah, that's right. Check his clothes. <laughs> if only he had some sort of a machine that could do that for you. So everybody else leaves, but luckily he's had the magic rock in his hand this whole time. You know, on second thought, I'm not really all that sure that Neil Breen's actually playing a human in this one, because apparently he doesn't need needles, and he just absorbs shit through his fucking skin. Also, apparently they feel Feel as though it's necessary to filter the oxygen through his bandages. You take off the mask, will you die? Yes! Thank God you had all the freaking, um, all the wrong possible surf. So he leaves the quote unquote hospital and all of a sudden some feet show up, only to immediately fucking disappear. So now we see the carpet in Neil Breen's home, which looks suspiciously similar to the carpet in the hospital. He hops in the shower and we get a romantic scene with him and his wife. Hell, no! James! Oh, sorry. Well, that pause is a weird time, but anyway. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. James Rolfe is a better filmmaker than you. And he filmed monster movies in his oh, backyard. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, no, no, now he's in his Man office, ass. and pretty much any time he's here, you can expect <laughs> there will be some sort of violence against his laptops. <laughs> but I kid you not. You see any, like, angry video game nerd, uh, James Rolfe's, like, pre-AVGM movies? He's filmed monster movies for dirt cheap, and they look way better. Like, he's that I passionate feel sad, for but I feel bad for all the laptops. Oh. Now we're at his friend's house, and the carpet looks suspiciously similar to the other Man, carpets in every other scene. And the, and the blinds look video. suspiciously <laughs> similar to the blinds in every other scene. What, 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 what were the, uh, but if you don't mind, if you don't mind uh, talking about budget-wise, uh, ballpark. What, what were some uh, budget? Budget, budget. Oh. 
producers, low budget indie producers like myself, should never talk about budget. Oh, that's fine. Budget, yeah. budget. Five dollars. It's are really irrelevant. <laughs> my, I mean, Tarantino gave his budget, and it was to someone like you is half. You know, I'm not going to tell you what it the was way less is. than you tell a million. me. Hey, I'll tell you my budget, the MC TV. And Reservoir yeah. Dogs was way better. I'll tell you my budget on MC TV, probably like maybe forty yeah. bucks. <laughs> Minus all the PC shit, really, the running weekly, it's a shit ton of Mountain Dew and paying off the Spotify. That's kind of about it. <laughs> you don't have to tell me, but I mean, in your own head, you tell me what you think the budget was. You tell me what you think. Uh, Two cents. To create and, make and a that garage sale. The way it looks. Back at home, Neil Breen asks his wife to get him his Fucking pills. Where are my pills? <laughs> Thank you. I don't need these. That is the worst thing you can do. Great. During the film, Neil- Now them pills are shitty. Neil Breen has several Literally. hallucinations with The Rock, wherein he is suddenly inside a room made out of garbage bags. It's a metaphor. Later, it seems as though Neil Breen has found the most irresponsible way to drink coffee with your laptop. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> One of my favorite things. Does he realize people are being drunk and laughing at his shit? Oh, I know. I, I, maybe he does. I don't know. If he does, Neil Breen, I'd like to interview you for MCTV. <laughs> and I'm going to try not to laugh my freaking ass off because my brain pretty much at points laughs at anything stupid. <laughs> about Neil Breen's films is just how fucking clumsy everyone is. People are always spilling shit, falling over, or just plain fucking up. I shit you not, all you gotta do is change the footage to black and white and all of a sudden you're watching an infomercial. Are you tired of this happening to you? There's got to be a better way! Are you tired of not being able to eat your tuna while you're driving? But hey, tuna. Do you find you ever get painful headaches that just won't go away? There's got to be a better way. I'm feeling less stable. Do you feel like you're always struggling to stay awake? <laughs> There's got to be a better way! Try Neil Breen, the only 100% doctor-recommended and FDA-approved way to cure all of your symptoms. <sighs> so now he's having dinner with his friends and the porno quality acting becomes more apparent than ever. I'm hungry. Oh, I can't wait for dinner. Meanwhile, the film decides to emphasize what a piece of shit drunk the dad is. It's on a beach, it's bathtub. <laughs> Can I have some wine, please? Wow, you're like not even gonna that clean that up. So one of the subplots to this film is that Neil Breen is hacking the government to expose secrets. And I guess he didn't really know how he was gonna plant those seeds for the audience. Fuck it, he'll just say it out loud to himself. I'm going to continue hacking into these government systems to see what I can find out. Uh, what kind of hacking involves a laptop from 2008? Oh wait, no, 1995. Oh. Yeah, more so that. About all this national and international corruption I know is going on. So apparently Neil Breen's wife is a pill junkie and she's been stealing his medication right out of the toilet. Neil Breen says, let's talk, but then the scene ends and cuts to him on his laptop. Why, I can do that hacking too. <laughs> oh my god. Also, apparently the last four keys he hit were with his mind. I better not have the keyboard. <laughs> Done. What? Did you like follow him into this room to say that? I forgot the sounds oh. are backed up. <laughs> really? Oh, gosh. And then they bang. Oh, gosh, it's so 
Oh, okay, so we have everything off his desk. Craigslist for broken laptops at some point. I'm jealous. I want that fucking desk. I mean, that looks sweet. Point. And I guess after acquiring them, he decided he was going to get as much use out of them as possible. There are so many goddamn scenes that revolve around him abusing his laptops. I have yeah. to assume that this is the only reason the conversation moved to the office. Fast forward to a bit later and they're already bickering at each other again. There is another girl. No, that is not true. <laughs> Yo, know here's how to make these movies better. You put my ass in them and then I just make fun of everybody for like the next hour and a half and shit. So now we're having a barbecue by the pool. I should mention that this is the same pool from I Am Here. Now, it's during this scene where piece of shit drunk dad manages to pull this party trick. More importantly, this is where the quote unquote hey. plot starts going somewhere. Now you have to feed the squirrels. Kind of. So this girl gets a call on her cell phone, and I guess her ringtone is just two keypad beeps. If only there was a product that allowed me to have an extra pocket outside of my jeans. There's got to be a better way. So if you haven't guessed, it's called a sweatshirt. <laughs> this is the book from the beginning of the movie. It's a magical day. Apparently this girl aged a lot more gracefully than Neil Breen did. Apparently it was <laughs> such a magical day that she keeps this fucking booklet inside her pocket everywhere she goddamn goes for 30 fucking years. I think of you every day. Oh god. I think of you every day. Well, that explains that look he was given earlier. So now these two are fighting for basically no reason. I think of you no so much every day, I have DVNR fan fics on my earlier. I'm gonna shoot this damn car up full of holes! No, no, no! What you say? Oh, that you only meant well, well, cause you did. What you say? <laughs> Somehow, Neil Breen eventually manages to get inside the house. All right, now, can we all imagine just how dramatic and emotional this must have been in Neil Breen's head when he was planning this out? Apparently, it makes the scene even more dramatic if you get blood on your face. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. Oh God! I've How seen could you have done clip. this? How could you have committed suicide? Later, Neil Breen is in an argument I've over the phone about publishing his book. He decides yeah. to throw shit at his laptop for good measure. That first book made a fortune for you. Later, Neil Breen and his long lost mid. Is this Derek Savage's brother? I'm now just re thinking that. Is he literally? The brother of the guy who made Cool Cat Saves the Kids and Cool Cat Stops a School. Oh, wait, no, that was Monkey Jones. Never mind. Chris go back to that magical spot. Meanwhile, his wife stays at home and kills herself. Later, it seems as though he's adjusted to his replacement wife quite effortlessly. He decides to tell her about how he's hacking the government. Shortly after that, he starts feeling a sudden urgency to leak all of the non-specific information he's collected. I can't wait any longer. Wow, that was believable. He is a hacker. I'm not ready for this. But apparently somebody already knows what he's doing, and now they're kidnapping his replacement wife. Oh, 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 that guy. Right in broad daylight. Super secret hacking. Hey, it's 90 minutes in when they have an antagonist. Great. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Are they dancing? <laughs> Are you tired of this happening to you? Gun self-defense for women covers from basic to advanced knowledge on guns, from pistols to shotguns. This film also covers mace, knife protection, stun guns, knife protection, karate self-defense, mace, knife protection, mace. I'm a knife protection, that shit. Karate self-defense, baseball. Bro, you just plain, you just aren't plain. <laughs> kind of rip off Eddie, Eddie Van Halen's rolling in his grave for this shit. Oh, bullying? Karate self-defense. Bullying? 
baseball. He shows up to the trailer outside a storage locker where she's being kept prisoner to find the kidnapper conveniently asleep on the job. He wakes him up to knock him out and then uses his magic powers to teleport into the room. He saves the day and then his house turns into paranormal activity for some reason. And now time for the most epic finale in all of cinematic fucking history. Neil Breen holds a press conference in front of the White House to talk about the files he'll be leaking. I have discovered more information than any hacker ever has. You could address ever. nicer. sir. What I have found will shock you. And in response, we see a compilation of corrupt politicians and CEOs killing themselves. I'm afraid of going to prison. They now know my crimes. Don't do it! <laughs> We're gonna <laughs> resign today as president of the bank. The bank. You can't make this shit up, the people. Bank. If Which this bank? isn't a happy ending, I don't know what is. So in conclusion, all of you need to start watching these movies right fucking now. <laughs> Fateful Findings was easily my favorite with Double Down at a close second, but each of these films are special and entertaining in their own unique way. Now if I truly wanted to dissect these films and mention every single thing I see, this video would be hours long. I mean, there was a lot of shit that I didn't even mention. Partially because I want there to be plenty of observations that other YouTube reviewers can pick up. Guys, his movies are so fucking comedically exploitable you have no idea. The other reason why I left out so much is because I want everybody to experience these movies firsthand. There are so many common elements in each of his films that it's a shame no one's made a drinking game yet. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna make one right now. I'm calling it Bringo. Bringo! Now it's up to you whether or not you want to make an actual bingo board out of it or just drink anytime <laughs> one of these things happens. But here's everything Bruh. from his films I noticed that I feel would be appropriate to include. Someone dropping something. Skull or skeleton. Fade effect. Neil Breen mentions or demonstrates his magic powers. An adult female character who is clearly wearing no bra. Repurposed prop or location. Hacking. Ghosts. Driving in the desert. Dead wife, magical rock, laser pointer, stock footage, character shifting between old and young in the same scene, a topless woman laying face down, ripped clothes, a shot of clothes hitting the floor or ground, Neil Breen talking to himself, corporate businessman, shot of someone's feet, swimming pool, blood on Neil Breen's face, shirtless Neil Breen, no! someone disappears through basic editing oh, tricks, on. violence against oh, laptops. So if you Still, watch the whole trilogy and take a sip of beer every time yeah, you see one of those things, you will die. Day. But hey, at least you had fun, so fuck it. In all seriousness, Neil Breen clearly has a passion for what he's doing. Uh, you know what, speaking of which, anyway, speaking of Neil Breen, um, yeah, my store's now officially cursed because they're now selling copies of Twilight New Moon in the fucking DVD bin. So yeah. I just wanted to get that up my chest. I'm cursed from now on. So, yeah, if I see that disc, I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> and I want to see more of it. So everybody help him out and support the artist. Well, then again, Hunger Games is also now getting sold there, so I don't know why. By purchasing one of his films. I mean, if you can figure out how to, that is. And just when you thought news couldn't get any better, he's got another film to be released this year. I am not of this earth. I am artificial intelligence from far into the future. Bro, just put your shit on YouTube. I have YouTube. taken on this human body in order to communicate with these yes. people. About I can move from one time plane to another. Well, there you have it. We have truly been blessed with quite possibly the most important new voice in independent cinema. The father, the son, and the holy alien space Jesus. The real human breed. Speaking of whom, you know who should have a movie? This guy. Hey, you'll see why. And yes, this is the game I've been playing to death right now, Heather.
I know a lot of gamers out there don't have much patience. At least that's what Bishop, the dude at the video store, said. So I'm at the register, and then I realize I got no money. I was seriously broke. Why? The best of badass in smoking history. Hot chick last night at the death match oh, it looks way better than. She smelled good. This ain't even a movie. I, am, <laughs> I bought her a drink. Anywho, I decide to get a job. The gig? Assassinate the drifter. So I went where I was supposed to and waited for the guy to show up. And there he was. This cat. I also well got dressed, way too good cool, at this game. Couldn't tell if he was the shit or just plain all shit. Yeah, so he's styling, fast, aggressive, and packing heat. Bada bing. Or at least it was supposed to be. Till she showed up. Her name? Sylvia Crystal, an agent with this Watchamacallit Association. Congratulations. You are certified as the 11th best. Yeah, he's trying to get with her mostly. How about getting oh. rid of the 10 killers above you and aim for the top? I want to be number but one. Yes, murdering the top so 10 assassins. enough for you? It's going to be a long, hard road. But who knows? You could kick ass. Could be dangerous. Could totally suck. What do you say, bro? Join me. Let's see how far we can take this. And for you there holding the controller right now, just press the A button. Let the bloodshed begin. I fucking love this game. Actually, you know what? Hold up. Okay, yeah. in odd news, um, where did this happen? Where did this happen? Here, well, where's Harris County? Houston boy found dead in washing machine after his parents reported him missing. Um. Well, the, um... well, the thing is, somebody said, how can a seven-year-old fit inside a washing machine? Oh, well, first of all, what kind of washing machine was it? Was it a top load or, or a side load one, like the Samsung? That's oh, very yeah, possible. Those. <clears throat> Pull up, I. Yeah, Heather. Weirdly enough, uh, you just reminded me of um. Where the hell is it? <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> to you? If so, your brains are scrambled. Believe it or not, every year some ignorant kid takes a ride in a clothes dryer just like this one and ends up getting hurt. It gets pretty hot in there, and those dryer fins can break your bones when they get going. If you think it's smart to climb in a dryer, you're really all wet. That was a real thing. <laughs> I'm okay, a dryer is very possible. And... Yeah. Uh... Anyway, just for the hell of it. <clears throat> Kick ass interest number one. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah, Heather, you're gonna like this. Apparently, Travis's hair was straight up inspired by Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> you know what? It looked kind of like it. I was like... Or that's okay. what, uh... Yeah, the guy who made it 2 to 5 one. Yes, that's what he calls himself. He's a Japanese programmer, Heather. Really, he'll need, he wants a kick-ass name. He'll get it. <laughs> Plus, a lot of his shit's starting to come on Steam, so I might be able to get the sequel to this in a few weeks. Yo, but yeah, this is a lot of the gameplay. Where's this death metal dude? Bad answer. Oh, I love damn. this game. It's game time. Come on. 
Zolle. No, he's just gonna go do it to a lot. This gives you a clue on the whole slashing and shit. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, this did release on the Wii. This is just a remastered uh, Steam version that I bought. But what? Already, I'm like ranked to number four and almost to the final uh, three. So yeah, I'm pretty close to almost finishing it. And the next game, funny enough, it goes from 10 assassins to 50. Which if I buy the sequel, yeah, I'm going to be playing that shit for weeks. Hey. Basically, Earth Night is going through each decade. This week is the 90s. And then next week is the 2010s. Two, two, uh, 2000s. I forget what the 2000s are. Is there any one of them? Yep. Dancing Queen is from the 90s? No, it's a. Uh, nah, it's a. Uh, it's 80s. <laughs> no, it's 70s. Oh, I only were, know, oh wait, no, they were together until 1980. I only know ABBA from Mamma Mia. Yeah, same. <laughs> Mamma Mia, everybody knows ABBA from. I mean, I started listening to the shit just because I wanted new disco music, so. Yeah, yeah. So they did Landslide as well in the 70s. And then in the 80s, they did Running Up That Hill and Total Eclipse of Your Heart. I think I watched clips in the movie, but I'm the only one somehow that's never gotten the whole point of all of it. Minus C. So Tuesday, well tomorrow, and then Thursdays, live in the Vida Loca. And then Friday, I don't. And then, yeah. yeah, whole thing. In the 2000s is a thousand miles and then numb by Lincoln Park. So I finally get to hear a rock cover of a thousand miles. But that's the Honestly, this is listenable. I mean, not saying the ABBA sucks, but their music is very dated, and Mamma Mia just kind of ruined it for me. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't really say it did. It still has some damn good songs. Hell, I gotta have a gold for so God's guys, sake. Thank you so much for watching that video. Texas number. Anywho.
because just for the hell of it, because this is still funny as shit. What's this? Oh, it's this video! And kill for us, Travis. I'll pass. You're gonna have me if you become the number one assassin. Back and we'll show her another movie I'm planning to watch at some point. Actually, hell, I've been planning to watch it since I was like freaking 15, but couldn't ever find it. Who the fuck? I approve! <laughs> oh my god, it's someone. Oh, everyone's done this dance. Oh my god. The most infamous music dance. Oh, yeah, do you know Ash Nico and, um... Oh, god, yeah, I it. remember when it dropped. I actually like that collab. <laughs> I had it on the key at one point. I think it was Val and Jada who got me into it. And how do you say your name? 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 Yeah, her, Hansu, Miku, and at Miko did a collab. Yeah, I know. And I was like... Honestly, every, everyone's collab with her because she's literally a vocaloid software. I think even the character was like a second thought, but then they had her in live shows and shit, and next thing you know, she's everywhere. I remember she was in a game that I played on, like, on my phone, and I was like... editing this avatar for three hours. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was watching wrestling for the time I come in, and I'm like, I'm already working, and I'm like, I'm like, what is it? Oh, it's Ash Nico. Oh, yeah, it's Ash I don't care. I love this innocent creature. Oh, okay. What else we got? Heather, you're safe. I ain't showing no damn naked turnips. <laughs> or the fucking naked turnip looks like. I don't know. Now, wait, shoot. Yeah. Another hair. Oh, shit, no. Actually, no. Uh, well, yeah. As I was doing stuff, I had peak. How the fuck? Pinto beads of cornbread stuck in my head. I was like, no. Pinto beads of cornbread. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah, fuck it, because honestly, this is actually the move. Well, what? Damn it, it's a slow version. Figure out something. Oh, yeah. 
I'm not even kidding. I think literally without Baby Mel, I wouldn't have gotten into any Japanese shit. Oh, this is the first Japanese band I got obsessed with. Oh shit, Joey, Joey's second, uh, channel's up now. Uh, and he's streaming Monday, Tuesday, he said, Monday, Tuesday, so on the other channel, he's streaming Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. You can click the link and then go to his second channel. As long as they don't basically at times brag about the stupid shit I've said about them. But... Darkness says Ben Vanessa. Got a see the hell. This one, man. Still see my chat while well, painstakingly sitting near an editing shit. Wait, what the fuck? Hold up. Wow. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I ate too- I need to go to bed soon. I- I need- I'm like, I'm so tired right now, like, I'm trying to so. sleep. Yeah. So. Oh. Alright, there we go. So I'm like, Boots red as fuck it. Anyway, because this is actually the movie I am going to watch at some point. Yes, it's called Repo, the genetic opera. And it's gothic as shit, and I want to see it. <laughs> Wait, who's the actor? Your mother's death oh, it's a girl from Spy Kids. Me to <laughs> the nothing ever lasts in this world. And why in the hell is she pull off a goth chick this well? I don't know. What chance has a 17 year old girl? I don't know. Hey, Bobber. You'll see why I picked this video in particular. Wait a minute. That guy, he looks familiar.
Oh, her name is Alexa Vega. Yeah, she was in Spy Kids. What's this? Repo the genetic opera. Or a club from it. I can feel it. It's straight up. I've been wanting to watch this movie for years and never gotten around to doing it. I know she's married to, right? Yeah. Carlos Pena Vega. Yep. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yeah, Morgan Vicky and Russia back together. Yeah, they yeah, met in. That was a while ago. They met in Bible study. And they're making new music with Big the, time, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, Vicky and Russia like back together, Morgan. No, I mean in Bible study? The fuck? Yeah, she met her. By the way, that uh, he's her second husband, but they're still married. Um, yeah, they met her and Carlos Pena. They met in Bible study. Yeah, one of these days I would have met literally um somebody. From, yeah, they have two kids. I mean, one of these days I wish I would have met someone that basically I say from a shark attack, but eh, never happened. I'm trying to figure out who that actor was. I've seen <laughs> him I'm going to do so go, blah, fuck, oh, anyway. Uh, uh, who wants to watch something about a weird fucking man? Uh, sure. Chris Chan? Those who wouldn't, uh -oh. I was going to save this for the 40 hour stream, but straight up, like, well, bro, there's like four parts, and they're all like an hour each. So probably spend over the next few streams. I play some of them. Wide web, because this, I dude, want everything. this dude is just fucking weird. I mean, don't get me wrong, like I've watched all this like multiple times, and I'm still trying to comprehend this fucking dude because he's now in prison. Are you playing to another forty-hour stream? No, I said I was gonna play this during the fort, the last one, but forgot to. Oh, um, my bad. But this one will get this video in particular will give you insight into this guy. I want everything about my house off the internet. This is Christian Weston Chandler, uh, previously known as Christopher before an animatronic bear said his name wrong which led him to have it changed, soon to be known as Christine when she transitioned to be a woman, but online trolls call them Chris Chan. He's demanding a video showing his hoarding situation be taken off the internet so that his elderly parents won't have their house condemned by the government. Who would report him? Well, that would be a dedicated group of internet users who have cataloged this man's life for the past 15 years, making him one of the most well-documented people in human history with his wiki oh, containing thousands of pages. This was, includes um, the Nickelodeon cartoon character stealing his girlfriend, the, uh, a doppelganger trying to, to steal Buffy, his identity, the, him being Buffy catfished by a dozen series. different women. The destruction of his PlayStation 3 for a fake bounty, money stolen from his bank account, his house catching on fire, the macing That's of a GameStop employee, running over a store owner with his car, getting tricked by the creator of the Super Mario Brothers, and having his character Sonic Chu stolen by a British sports commentator. Sonic Chu is a hybrid of Sonic and Pikachu that Chris created an entire comic series for. This character is also his real-life alter ego that he believes will one day bring about an interdimensional merge that will reveal him to be the reincarnation of Jesus. <sighs> but I oh, think I'm getting that. ahead of myself here. Let's go back to the beginning. So for years now, people have been asking me to do a video talking about Chris Chan, and the problem is I just never knew where to begin on the subject. So for the past month now, I've been trying to get in touch with Chris Chan in any way I could. 
Uh, but after all that failed, I messaged Poppets. He responded right away and asked me if I wanted to do an interview with Chris Chan, and the answer to that was absolutely yes. So within a few days, I get a cameraman, and I am heading down a couple hours making a road trip out of it to meet the notorious Chris Chan in person. And this is the street. Yes, he actually met him for this. Is that it? And this was filmed in uh, 2019, Sonic before the arrest records and shit. But, yeah. Look, Sonic, zoom in on the license plate. I'm also not going to reveal what landed him in prison until the last video I show, so yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Just keep you two on your toes, at least. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hey, how are you? Art, is that right? How's it going, Christian? Right. Nice Christine? I'm Jesse. Yeah. Jesse. It's nice an to honor meet you. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Christine, hello. I'm Jesse. Yeah, Jesse. Nice to meet you. All right. I suppose we can go inside. Yeah, let's go inside. We're going to do the interview downstairs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. Now downstairs. Okay. And and that dog Quiet. screaming Quiet. bloody Quiet. fucking murder. Alright, everybody's inside. <laughs> Go. Okay. Alright, well. This is, um. Very nice. Yeah, this is the room where it was like, this is made. This is where it all, um. Sonic chew. Those dogs are screaming bloody yeah. murder. <laughs> they calm down after a little bit yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, is that okay? <laughs> hello out there, deep, hello out there, YouTube, internet, all that. Hello, hello. Come on, having a good day. Here's your intro, kinda. All right. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> good enough. Even prior to his birth, Chris's parents' relationship gave many reasons for concern. Bob and Barbara Chandler were aged 54 and 40 respectively. At this later time in a couple's life, most are dissuaded by medical professionals from having children. This is for a variety of reasons. As many studies have shown, such an age difference would leave a large generational gap between parent and child. In some cases, this can put the child at risk of growing up socially stunted. As from a biological standpoint, they also have a larger chance of facing health complications at birth. More specific to the Chandlers as individuals, however, was the hastiness of their relationship. Prior to Chris's birth, the two had been married for only two years. They'd wed quickly in a bid to escape their previous marriages. Consequently, they held strained relationships with their previous families, with Barbara's in particular being intense. Additionally, they were both alcoholics, having even first met each other in a bar. Of course, that's not to say that their family unity was doomed from the start. In spite of these imperfections, it was far from unsalvageable. But these details are important in establishing that from their newborn's conception, it was an uphill battle. Such a dynamic requires a consistent and active effort to maintain normalcy, one that the Chandlers may have not been ready to face. Christopher Weston Chandler was born in Charlottesville, Virginia on February 24th, 1982. In those first few months of life, Chris was an average toddler. His first word, according to his mother, was monkey, a rather cute mispronunciation of mommy. However, it wasn't long before problems would arise. To start, in spite of having a newborn child, they continued their nightly routine of going out drinking. To babysit Chris, as well as his half-brother Cole, who lived with them at the time, they appointed Rochelle, a woman who lived in the same neighborhood as a family. Chris's sibling later recalled that it was apparent to him, even as a youngster, that she was unfit to be caring for children. As the story goes, one night in August of 1983, Rochelle became irritated with Christopher after he interrupted her phone call. She opted to punish the toddler by locking him in a room by himself for the rest of the night. Christopher, who was just one and a half years old at the time, was traumatized to the point that when he was rescued, he refused to speak entirely. In fact, he regressed to the point of only communicating through screaming and crying for the next six years. To compensate for this newfound aphasia, his parents began taking him to attend speech therapy classes, which is where he was first diagnosed as being autistic. With the doctor 
doctor predicting that he would likely never write his own name, let alone make it to high school. In a strange twist of events, Bob and Barbara would continue leaving Christopher with the delinquent babysitter for the next few years, likely so they could continue their tradition of late night benders. This led his stepbrother, Cole, to attribute Chris's early mutinous as largely being the fault of their neglect, a trend that would only worsen with time. Though the assertion that neglect was the source of his autism is baseless, the babysitter's supposed actions undeniably exacerbated Chris's condition. And in spite of its immediate consequences, they failed to take many basic preventative measures. In 1985, a new family moved into the Chandler's neighborhood. With a child of their own, the families quickly became cordial with each other. This naturally led to Christopher becoming playmates with the couple's daughter, Sarah Hammer. Chris has a fond view of the years he spent with Sarah, reflecting upon them by proclaiming her to be a lifelong best friend. Unfortunately, the young girl would often pull mean-spirited pranks on the autistic child. An example of this was when she once convinced Chris that the cartoon character, Casper the Friendly Ghost, lived in the crawl space under her home. Once the young boy had crawled under the residence to look for himself, she proceeded to lock him in, trapping Chris until her father came to the rescue. While one could argue that events such as these implicate her as a foe, Chris insists far more positive than negative experiences. He dismissed them as just childish pranks, overshadowed by his cherished memories of them playing. According to Chris himself, it was her that brought him out of his autistic social shell for the time. At home, Christopher's life was surrounded by music and pop culture. Unable to speak, he spent much of his time consuming children's entertainment such as Sesame Street, Care Bears, and Transformers. Bob even purchased a Commodore 64 home computer, sparking Chris's lifelong interest in technology and video games. His father was proud of Chris for being able to operate the personal computer before he could even speak, programming his own games on the console by age 6. Accompanying the Chandlers was their pet dog, Patty who Chris had picked out himself from his aunt Karina's litter. At this point, his home life wasn't perfect, but it was comfortable. Unfortunately, things would only get worse when he began to attend school. The year was 1987, when he was dropped at the front door of Greene County Primary School. With Chris's struggles to communicate, this marked the beginning of many obstacles he'd have to overcome in his academic career. In spite of this, Bob was optimistic. In order to inspire his son, he penned a heartfelt letter detailing his expectations. The reason for this open letter to you, which will grow as time goes on, is that I know now that I, at best, haven't much time left to share myself with you. Particularly to share my things, my dreams, and my thoughts with you at a time in the future when you will be able to understand. Remember to use my things and carry on my dreams if you want to. A distinct characteristic of the letter is that it's written informally. It's meant to be read as if he and Chris were speaking face to face. A clearly intimate discussion. Bob goes on to explain personal matters such as his previous marriages and what he sought to avoid when raising Chris. I didn't plan my life. I just took it as it came along. I seem to have had no control over it. It always came along with what was right for me. Look at me eight years ago in 1979 when I was really down and out and ready to cash in my chips with heart problems that I didn't even know about. Your mother, Barbara Ann, helped me through the rough spots and together we had you. Now I really had something to live for. No better things or events could have happened to me. We've come a long way in the last eight years. Together we have built a whole new life with an exciting set of dreams. But by far the most important message Bob wanted Chris to take away was the importance of legacy. He recounts the story of how he carelessly broke his late grandfather's straight razor, an item that held great sentimental value to him and how it caused him to realize the respect he ought to hold for their memories. From this, he hoped his son would cherish any future inherited belongings he might be given by his father, such as his prize stamp collection. Do not be in such a hurry to use, play, or work with these things. First, learn all about them, how to use them and enjoy them, their value, and how you can thoughtlessly yeah, up, waste their value, then enjoy them as I have. 
As a boy, my greatest dream was to have inherited things from my mother, father, grandparents, etc. All of my books, stamp collections, and records. My dreams for you, your mother, and other personal things. This idealized new life he wished to build with Chris and Barbara would culminate in the backyard of the Chandler's house. In 1989, Bob created a plaque and placed it on their backyard shed, proclaiming it as the dreaming studio of Mr. C and Little C. It's here that he'd attempt to teach Chris how to create things. Evidently, the dreaming studio didn't last long enough to make a true impact on Chris though, because in spite of the clear sentimental value Bob placed on his belongings, Chris would later sell his father's cherished stamp collection in 2017, using the profits to purchase toys. While on the yeah. subject of games, when examining the Chandler's Christmas of 1989, it can be discovered that Christopher received a Nintendo Game Boy from Santa, his second ever video game console. It was that same year that the young boy purportedly began speaking again, with the help of his speech therapist. By age 7, Chris had defied the professional's original expectations of him an accomplishment that he'd wear with pride for the rest of his academic career. Soon after regaining his voice, for unknown reasons, Christopher was transferred from Greene County Primary School to Nathaniel Green Elementary to attend the fourth grade. Although he was still riding off the success of regaining his speaking abilities, the administrators at this new school were not as impressed. While we'll never know for sure what happened there, legal documents indicate that the district had attempted to place him at a separate special education school, a decision that Bob and Barbara fought tooth and nail. It's speculated that they felt Chris's recent successes proved he didn't need the accommodations. Additionally, given their advanced age, they likely had a different perception of special ed than what was offered at the time. Regardless, the parents escalated the conflict. Chris recounts his experience at the school as one of frequent physical abuse, notoriously recalling an incident in which five facility members, including the school principal, pinned him down to the floor and recorded his cries on an audio cassette tape. Chris attributes this alleged assault to having been motivated by lust, going so far as to accuse the principal of being a pedo. He claims that the man had him sit on his lap before whispering quote-unquote offensive things to the young child. However, given the detail that the alleged assault was recorded, some have speculated it's much more likely that Chris had thrown a tantrum, and facility members recorded his cries as evidence that he couldn't function in a mainstream institution. Uh. Upon learning of the incident, Bob filed legal action against the administration, causing Chris to be homeschooled during the proceedings. The case was eventually dropped in 1994. At this point, with the young boy's mainstream enrollment still in jeopardy, Bob and Chris moved to Chesterfield County so they could legally attend a different school district. This forced Bob to retire, becoming a stay-at-home father. In order to continue working her job, Barbara remained at their home in Ruckersville, though she would come to visit them every weekend. The decision to keep Chris in public school is perhaps the single most significant turning point regarding his early development. The failure to provide accommodations for his special needs led to feelings of ostracization and appeared to hinder Chris's social development. Jumping forward to the Christmas season of 1992, Bob and Chris made a stop at the Regency Square Mall. At this shopping center was an animatronic creature named Leonard Bernstein, who conducted a symphony orchestra as part of a musical program. The animatronic was designed to be interactive, engaging with the audience in conversation through its human operator. The crowd was light that Thursday afternoon, causing Christopher to be able to have a largely one-on-one -on -one conversation with the robot between songs. Chris was spellbound, leading him and Bob to watch the performance for the next hour. In the midst of their conversation, Leonard Bernstein asked Christopher for his name. When Chris responded, the operator must have misheard him, as he began referring to the child as Christian. Following that interaction, the mistake stuck, with Chris going so far as to request his name be changed from Christopher to Christian. Oddly enough, Bob and Barbara agreed, and had it legally changed the following year. With this brand new first name bestowed upon him by an animatronic bear, the now adolescent boy continued his education at Providence Middle School in yes, a freaking bear. the fall of 1993. He later described this campus as being much more pleasant than Nathaniel Green, 
and attributes his happiness there to a teacher named Mrs. Sanford, who is to date the only educator that Chris has singled out favorably. She helped the child develop social skills and instructed him on how to cope with the verbal bullying he endured. Upon his graduation from Providence, Mrs. Sanford wrote a personal letter addressed to Chris, in which she gave him heartfelt advice and bid her well wishes. If you show people where your weak points are located, then they will know how to push your button. If you never show them, they will never know. Do your very best at Manchester, put your best foot forward, and treat others as you wish to be treated. Love, Mrs. Sanford. 16 of all the pop culture movements in the 90s, one of the most prominent was the mascot with attitude trend, and the most notable example of this was Sega's Sonic the Hedgehog. Debuting in 1991, the Blue Blur is most notable for his extreme speed. Made specifically to appeal to Western markets, the character was a massive success, quickly receiving his own syndicated Saturday morning cartoon in 1993. To promote the release of this new TV series, Sega hosted a contest known as the Sonic the Hedgehog watch and win sweepstakes, in which they challenged viewers to write down what Sonic said at the end of each episode. Upon mailing in their transcriptions, they would then be entered into a drawing, where they'd have a chance to win a thousand dollar shopping spree at KB Toys. As an early adopter of the Sonic craze, Christian entered the contest, and as luck would have it, when the winners were selected in February of 1994, he actually won. What to do was exactly watch Sonic the Hedgehog? A cartoon and I'd listen to what Sonic says at the end of it and write it down for a whole week and then I had to mail it in and I had to be drawn out of a hat and I just won. This victory marked the beginning of Christian's obsession with Sonic, who would go on to become his professed lifelong hero. And after the high of this spending spree, it wouldn't be the last time he entered a contest. By the spring of 1996, the family was once again together as Barbara retired from her job to live with her husband and son in Chesterfield County. This wouldn't last long, however, as according to Chris, some of their neighbors began spreading harmful rumors regarding the family. While what happened has never been specified, the situation was apparently vitriolic enough to cause them to relocate to an apartment complex just outside of Richmond. But being immersed in his pop culture pastimes, Chris was largely unfazed by these developments. It was that September that Christian finally began his first year at Manchester High, a period he would retrospectively deem the happiest times of his life. At this school is where the creation of his very first Sonic the Hedgehog fan character, Bionic the Hedgehog, was conceived. Spending much of his freshman year as a water boy for the varsity basketball team, he came up with the character after being hit in the head with a basketball while he was daydreaming about Sega's gaming mascot. It is, rather fittingly, an orange recolor of Sonic that likes to play sports. This ninth grade year would also mark the beginning of his passive love quest, developing a major crush on a cheerleader he'd met during practice. After befriending the young lady, he quickly confessed that he had feelings for her, to which she politely turned him down. In contrast to his time at Providence, Chris's years at Manchester High were filled with far more conflict. In sophomore year, Christian was forcibly assigned to take the special education bus after a petty conflict with another student. According to Chris, he and another teen would race every day to see who could exit the vehicle first. This competition escalated, eventually accumulating in the boy punching Chris in order to beat him out the door. However, like many of Chris's recollections from this period, what actually occurred is rather unclear. Across his various recountings of the bus incident, Chris has contradicted himself numerous times. He claimed that he both did and didn't fight back, and also went back and forth on whether or not his glasses had been broken. What has remained consistent, however, is his adamance that he was blameless. He bemoaned that in spite of instigating the fight, the other boy quote-unquote got off scot-free. 
Regardless of the truth, it was because of this conflict that he was removed from the mainstream busing system and forced to ride with who he rudely described as the slow in the mines. At this point, it's worth discussing Chris's particular distaste towards the developmentally disabled, one that illustrates the ableism instilled in him by his parents. It's clear at this age, Chris uncritically took the words of authority figures to heart. In what are typically the years of rebellion for most teens, Chris was remarkably obedient. This can be observed rather transparently in his first self-produced video titled Song of Christian. In this clip, Chris goes on multiple tangents about grievances he holds with his peers, such as their use of vulgar language. Of course, I'm of course now I'm talking about those despicable rude words they got there. I mean, they're all boop and son of a boop. You understand what I'm talking about? I mean, that just really ticks me off. But you should never ever do I mean, it's just rude. Very rude. I mean, I'm just sick of it. I mean, yeah. This would only be the start of Chris's self produced recordings. It's Alvin and the Chipmunk. Oh, give us wait. A this Chris Chan? Yeah, it's yep. Oh, man, you know, I've watched this full documentary and literally I still question this freaking man. Yeah, arrested for hello, the I, I word. Chandler, and I'm yeah, and I remember on um, Vengeance Sis, no kidding. His name on is YouTube Chandler, live stream, and he's they were talking about no us and, and somebody filmed the arrest. Yeah, I remember the day that came out, Chris Bratt made a video making fun of it. And then straight up, I was like, yeah. who the hell is this man? Then Gamer from Mars 6, four-part documentary, well, and I watched it. Well, it's a, it. it's a, he, she, it, whatever it is. Eh, she at this point. Although, really, the prison system called him a he for some reason. I'm the neck for a 71-year-old man. <laughs> I think so. As Christian entered his junior year, the maturity so one would expect it, from a high school it? student didn't seem Male to be developed. Male or female prison? Most likely male. Yeah, because... Helping. In a mock radio broadcast, Chris recorded for fun, his mother humors him as if he's a child, while he pretends to have guests such as Alvin and the Chipmunks on the program. Of his time at Manchester High, 11th grade has the most documentation. Recovered assignments illustrate how he performed at school and the actual quality of his work against the grades he received. One of the first leak projects is dated October 29, 1998. Intended to be an icebreaker activity for his chemistry class, Chris notably refused to talk to any male students, leaving all their spaces blank. In spite of his woes of loneliness, things weren't entirely hopeless. It was in that class he would become lab partners with two female students, Kelly Andes and Sarah Bevel. They would be some of his first quote-unquote gal pals, a term Chris later coined to describe all of his female friends. Chris has reason that his autism test found that he got along better with women I rather than men. Chris's gal pals would make up the entirety of his social life throughout high school well, to varying degrees of sincerity. Perhaps the most earnest of these was Tiffany Gowan, who sat with Christian every day during lunch. I mean, hell, I'm I on can the spot eye. it, so... I mean, hell, I'm on the freaking high end of it. Well, not my cousin. He's on the low end, the severe end. No, and I mean, I swear to God, Heather, there are people... Let's just say the work program is kind of one of those kind of programs. Oh, don't worry. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, kind yeah. of was went, I was kind of put through that for all of 2000, early No, I mean, 20. straight up, literally, at points I felt like they were trying to... They were thinking I was a freaking idiot or some shit. What? Really? I got a lot of marriage proposals by the same person. Honestly, I just lost my shit with all of them. And really, since two of my best friends pretty much moved on and got jobs and shit, I pretty much am there by myself. So, yeah. Especially, the mere fact, they really what? Although I did. I'm I I'm going back to next a, year once a, a week. A female um, yeah. friend I from high school that I at, who was working there for a while because it was a job for her. Now. And she was yeah. already she was pregnant with her second child, and she would she told me that she would have to have an epidural and C section because she broke her pelvis at eight years old, and she can't have any naturally. 
Ooh. Yeah, I mean, what? Um, trying to remember anything else from there. Well, thank God one of the people from there is retiring because I knew she used to bitch at me for stupid shit all the time. Including basically one time of the one thing that triggers me a lot of like, why are you always wearing black? It's like the number one thing to set me off. Well, that point. get this. Wearing black or any dark color is actually very, um, well, any kind of dark or neutral colors are very um, universal anyway. So it's not unusual. I mean, I just tell people two reasons. One, I straight up had a full-on goth phase in high school. And two, I pretty much just been wearing it for the last nine years. But yeah. I'm still fucking pissed. At... No, here's the thing, too, in a few weeks. I have to wind up freaking convincing my manager at my job to literally let me there one day a week. So I could suffer still. Yeah, it's one day a week. But guess what? If you're in there for one day, it feels like 50 damn years. I'm not even kidding. How many I'm hours not... are you there? From like 8 in the morning till 2. It feels like fucking school, but I'm even less productive in there. I wasn't even kidding at points when I said I straight up was listening to Archers of Loaf and fell asleep. That's how bad it's gotten there. Like, I straight up hate him. Minus, like, one guy who's a tech nerd, so basically I get to geek over PC shit with him. Okay, that ain't bad. What, that... Star Wars and a bunch of other stuff. Although he's also a New England Patriots fan, and I don't give a shit about football. So, yeah. Well, that's common in New England to be a Patriots fan. Oh, you don't want to know how much football talk goes on in the fucking Van Heather. I am asleep. Full on asleep. In the back of the damn van, so no one can see me. So he's a diehard because I don't want to hear it. Diehard fan. No, about all of them are football people. One of them's an Eagles fan. One of them's Patriots. One of them's the New York Giants. One of them's another freaking team I don't care about. Seriously, when my friends were there, we were just geeking over anime and stupid Marvel shit. That was it. But now with them gone, it, it's old. not. It makes it hard. It, it takes a lot of effort to tolerate being there. Oh yeah, believe me. Have the crap I've said to Jake Oboy at points. I wasn't kidding. Hell, he's still in disbelief. Sit in that program from eight to two, and then see how you turn out. Well, for me, as far as a work uh, program, it was sort of like, it was called Life Services for the county. It's and, kind of what we have, but at okay. the same time, when it's I was like... Work, when I was doing yeah. some stuff there to, to do it stuff, I just pretty much listened to my portable radio through the head, headset, talked some with the people, with the friend that I had from high school that I was working with for a while, she kept well, you're, saying, "You're um, lucky. And, we barely got to listen to music, and I just prayed to God the radio." And wasn't if they shit. played it on the, if they played it on uh, the speakers in the building, they would actually play not bad music. Okay, I kid you not. They they know, had on my favorite station too. Dead ass, they knew how much I bitched about the music in every store we were at. Minus savers because they actually play good shit. But everywhere else, Walmart, Walgreens, CBS, there was places with no music and I was losing my damn mind. Yeah, because, yeah. Even works. Kmart music, while it was um, like Muzak or like Vaporwave, well, I think that 
Jefferson Starship cover of Sarah that Lynn made for uh, yeah. Kmart. That was a little vaporwave stuff, but when I asked my mom about it, she was like, I remember that. That was actually some calm music. So I could at least deal with the music stuff. It ain't bad. But when I you always hear pop the music, most. pop music, then I'm like, yeah. okay, I thought hearing Sarah Borella's or over and over and I'm like, play some shine down, please. <laughs> Honestly. I begged for any fucking grunge music that wasn't Smells Like Teen Spirit. Oh, I'll take that over what they play at my work. But no, of course, one part of it is... Um, here's they, the thing that pisses me off always about the uh, radio version they play. They butcher half of Kurt's fucking solo. Which alone gets on me considering the guy's that damn good a guitarist. But, yeah. Or was, R.I.P. Beautiful Grunge Angel. Oh, yeah. I kid you not, though. And if my phone had a good enough battery, I would also listen to. Uh, I was actually on the Chevelle binge during that time, so I listened to a lot of. Oh, them. I'd rather listen to Chevelle. And than then anything. I listened to a Tom, uh, Tom Clancy interview from. Charlie Rose years ago that they had archived on YouTube. So that was one day though. Yeah, I mean that, that's that's my fact, so also the mere fact is um we used to write everything on paper until straight up they just gave us fucking laptops and shit, which I was excited for. But then the laptops are absolute shit. Oh, you talking about the Chromebooks? Those aren't Chromebooks, those are freaking slabs of wood. Okay, oh. what brand are they? Are they? Are They're they... HPs. Oh, those. And they I think I remember. Well, I, I mean, didn't have one of those. I never I didn't have one of those. those so... Hold on, I still have an old Chromebook in my room. I just I can't I mean, use it anymore. Hold on, what kind is it? Hold on. They're probably not bad for everyone else trying to use them. My grandma, my uh, my uh, sister, well, uses dust. A, Holy shit. uses an. I think hers is an. HP. Yeah, mine's different. Than but I will say this. What? As of over the last two years of someone who's become a full-time PC dork, I fucking hate them. <laughs> I hate them to death. They have the suckiest speed, the suckiest connection, the suckiest freaking signal. You can't customize them because of the stupid freaking lock system the administration puts on. Oh, is it like the encryption system they put on Apple's? Yes. And you have oh, to be on the no. specific Wi-Fi just to access YouTube. Okay, that's and oh, Spotify. Wait. Oh yeah, that's uh, they do it by that's kind of what they did in my school. Yes, I've connected it's, Spotify on there on purpose. Yeah, we um, yeah, my uh, somebody I went to school with who was thank you, freshman, uh, well, uh, and he actually he would use Proxboy, but if you typed in Proxboy on Google. When you were using it in the school, yeah. it wouldn't say this. Looking at this term is blocked because of the algorithm they made. So, yeah, you were not allowed to view certain. You weren't allowed to access YouTube at all unless you already had props flow. Yeah, you know. I mean, I knew in high school we were. But I listened to music through Groove Shark, which was a lifesaver. I mean, my high school was in a and a lot of Fox show. News archives. <laughs> Straight up, we had freaking Google and YouTube and all that shit because really we had to use it for all our papers and crap. And we used thumb drives a lot. And the Mac Lab straight up had like full on, um, like IMAX with Photoshop and all the other fancy shit by Adobe. So I was we able to make used a, the MacBook Pros. And that's the kind to, that I still use today, except to make the same one because it belonged to the school. So, yeah, I mean, I made a lot of stuff on Photoshop and shit. I kid you not. I was working on Photoshop stuff during math class. They only expected me to do six topics. So afterwards, I just plug in tool, ignore everybody and freaking just wail away at Photoshop. Uh, Why you think I'm good at this shit? <laughs> yeah. 
hours on end of that and also hours of end of everybody in the class going over my shoulder being like morgan show you be getting back to doing math shut up you chodes oh yeah um were you already done with it yeah i was the math the teacher literally only told me to do six because yes i suck at math and really anytime i try to do math my head explodes that <laughs> or almost does uh, okay there were times I had to get sat down at the work program and do math, and I lost my shit. Mm. You, so I'm assuming you didn't do well. Did you oh, take any me, challenging Heather, I never electives? Looked at, I never looked at the score on my final for, for well, what was it, pre-college math. Uh, well, it was okay. all online shit, so really, it was just uh, do some okay. subjects and then do whatever the fuck you want for the rest of class. Oh, I took, um, well, in my senior years, I took trigonometry and chemistry, but it wasn't that. Again, I already, I did well in algebra, so I did well in chemistry because of it. So, <laughs> thankfully. I just realized I was just selling toasters at the concert. God damn it. Oh, so. And pop. You see. Oh, also, oh shit, also David selling a pop socket. At the but yes, this is what I've been working on for the last like three freaking hours. <laughs> no, I need a no, pop socket. I might get one. I don't know yet. Oh wait, I forgot. I gotta do the shoes. Also, um, so basically David selling shirts, pop socket posters, and a shot glass. Mm, no shot I mean, it'd be cool to have a shot glass, but I can't drink out of it. <laughs> Let's find bungle. What happened? Oh, it's loading. <laughs> no, it's freezing. I Fine. think an ant bit me yesterday. <laughs> there was a tick at work, apparently dead on the ground. that freaked out my boss. Oh, oh my gosh! Somebody might have had a. I will say ticks. Oh, if it was anyone in town, I wouldn't doubt it. Well, they usually tran they usually get to their places by animals, so maybe somebody didn't do an update on the flea and tit medicine. Eh, so yeah. maybe on the service hey. dog. I'm so tired. I, oh, wait, yeah. I swear, ticks are hard to kill without having to have a hammer or something. Easy. Get them out and you freaking poison them to death. Not only that, but I would, I would get it and I would wrap it in paper and then put a lighter to it and catch it on fire and let it burn. Yeah, fair enough. Especially if it's, if it's engorged, it'll do a pop and explode. So, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> just Joey, Joe, and Ithessa. Yeah, yeah, At the moment, just them. Yeah, we got up there. I, I made a list of all the, um, the years that my favorite years were. 2007, 2009, early 2010. No, early 2012. No, or most half of first half of 2012, uh, mid 2013. First half yeah. of 2014. Uh, yeah, no, I'm getting specific here. Uh, um, all of 2016 and 17. 18 was eh, and then 2019 was pretty good, and then bam. And 2020. I think now, according to this year and last year, I don't know. This er, early of this year seems to be okay. So, well, thank God the flash is finally ending. Eh. I mean, and eleven were dark because I lost five family members during those years. So, Wait, uh, the did... years absolutely sucked for me. What? Um, twenty twelve, twenty thirteen, twenty seventeen. 
Uh, Early 2010 wasn't bad because I had my uh, Sweet 16. All of middle school, honestly, minus part of seventh grade, just <laughs> fucking blew for me. Not even mention again, guy, kid on the spectrum, straight up, basically everyone against him. Oh no. Yes. In high school. Got? Middle school. Okay, middle well, no. school is always elementary bad school. The worst middle years. school, I've lost my shit several times, and people looked at me like I was a hyperactive spaz. Um, Middle school years are brutal because of everybody oh, yeah. transitioning. Me. And I, I dealt with bullying. It was verbal. Uh, trust me. I had a worse at points. Got blamed by teachers and shit. A um, bunch of other fucking bullshit or whatever. You guys see where my hatred of people comes from at points? Oh, so you're a quasi misanthrope. It's all right. <sighs> oh my god, I can't stop yawning. I mean, hell. It took me literally like three years after high school to make any decent friends. I had some good right, childhood, so. but they're gone. <laughs> it's almost. It's almost <laughs> not on 11 yet, but I'm getting tired. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, still. so when do you think we can get Jay Cudley on here? Man, I tried my nice. Because I feel very bad that I feel bad that uh, Chris the Canadian said he's a piece of POS, and I'm. I don't feel bad. He's eating a fucking ass if he's sick. Hold on, I'll be right back. Wait a second. And yes, Heather, I can literally tell when someone's being an ass, and that's 100% Earth. Well, somebody's experiences, because they have a bias, they may assume some things. And of course, everybody's gut feeling may be different because they might have conditioned themselves to be. Like, I mean, hell, ancient, who's to say they know. didn't snort shit before watching the video? Jeez. Or the perfumes. Oh yeah, there was fucking fucking freaking shit. By the way, Joe, if you in here, I still don't care. I'm just glad he wasn't there. It was last night. No, that was Joe. I mean Joey. Oh, I meant Joey. I'm glad Joey wasn't there. It was just Joe. I don't know. They both look the freaking same. One is Sicilian descent and one is Puerto Rican. Ah, damn it. Computer, what have you done? Uh oh. And it skipped the fucking never mind. Yeah, screw it. Listen to Fully Cooly. It's amazing how I noticed that name because of when I read a Wikipedia page back in 2005 about a character in one of the Kappa Mikey episodes that was, um, Inspired by a character in Fully Cooly. Most look likely horror because she's the only one that anyone remembers. Oh, it was a guy. Okay, maybe the 12 year old kid who I don't remember his fucking name. I think he was an adult. Maybe one of the FBI agents in one of the other episodes. Probably then. Oh, yeah. I mean, hell, even in middle school and high school and shit. I basically also got fun of basically, at that point, still obsessing over Ever After High and Monster High. I mean, really, without them, honestly, I wouldn't have made this shit, so yeah. Always in my mind, 24/7, Heather. I base people think I'm crazy. Yeah, I'm always thinking they're crazy. Reverse psychology in some ways, because really, yeah, they kind of are. 
I was going to carry points by the years the hell out of them mostly and just leave them thinking a certain thought for all. Get some mind going. But yeah. Honestly, what was it? Elementary school just freaking sucked my ass a few things. Middle school blew. High school, I basically started hating everybody because I thought the whole world was against me. Not because of Teenage Rebellion, because straight up that was all that was going through my head. It sucks. Oh, and yeah, I even fought a couple people. Somewhat. Oh my gosh. Somebody it has a burner and it's called Heather, Heather's Sis. How much would it be to spend that burner to the fire? And it's not even a picture of my sister. Besides, the person in, in the picture is an adult, whereas my half sister is pushing 14. So. Believe me, uh, you don't want to bring that up to them because you're going to make you freaking. Oh, uh, I have before, but they don't. They didn't remember. And I'm not going to mention it again. Yeah, let them not remember. Basically, the people who always screw with one, you never want to give them bad ideas. Somebody asked if play, does Playboy count as reading? I would say yes, because they had, they, I don't know about it anymore, but they always had very interesting articles and interviews in the magazines. That, that's why a lot of re people read them. I, I kid you not. There's a lyric in a talk show boy song about that. <laughs> um, for the Hustler magazine, I only read the articles. Oh, Hustler's words. I... But. Hold up, I gotta get that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, the first president or running candidate to be interviewed by Playboy was Jimmy Carter. Oh no, it was just or it was just by some ordinary person that will interview them, and the articles were really interesting. And even my friend can choose a guy can confirm that because yeah. you're still gonna be able to hear. But yeah, this is actually the song. Hey. It's like 36 degrees here. Celsius. You didn't play that. Don't hate this until you write this. So the thing with talks are not this. He's sure he's just yes. those yes. Those yes. Those yes. I'm a little pretty one, I touch myself, I touch myself, and everywhere I look I always find myself, I sign myself, I think I'm all together, but I tear myself apart because I cut myself, I cut myself, I cut myself, I cut myself, shaving. You fuck yourself way too hard, you wouldn't be cool if it weren't for the lessons that you learned in the bell jar. Nah, nah, nah. In the white room, you shoot me dead, I'm in the Australian atomic particles in the bathroom, and in my bed, we use a magazine. Okay. Oh my god, I'm gonna I also have a load of his MP3s on my phone. Um. Uh. <laughs> 
I swear, I've had this toothache for hours now, and I don't know what to do about it. Mom's like, if it gets work, we'll go to the dentist, so I'm like, okay. But well, I'm leaving literally on Wednesday, so. How do you go to the dentist, maybe? There we go. This is my favorite song, by the and I'm hoping it's not, I don't have my wisdom teeth. That's all I'm hoping for. I don't want wisdom teeth. Feel my rest. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. something but I would feel way more worse than I can attention to TV It's gotta be a night that's straight up. I'm playing drums on Jacob Boy's stream because he wanted me to play this. And I already fucking learned it. Rosemary, <laughs> heaven restores you in life. You're coming with me oh, so well. through the aging, the fearing, the strife. It's the smiling on the package. It's the faces in the sand. It's the thought that moves you upward. Embracing me with two hands. Right, we'll take you places. Yeah, maybe to the beach. When your friends, they do come crying. Tell them now your pleasure set upon slow release. Yeah, there we go. Now, after four fucking hours. Model, so it took a life with no So anyone else who's here, share a broadcast and shit. 
tomorrow I might do a chest drop. I don't know yet. I'm at 50k in the chest, but really, I don't have a fucking audience, so I'm not freaking out. Yeah, but well, that's a lie I didn't go do, but me, yeah, okay. It took a lifespan with no cellmate. Do you say you have to work tomorrow? I don't. Oh. Although they call me in on Wednesday because straight up I just said fuck it because, oh uh, yeah, I need the fucking money and really, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to, but at this point, also, since I've been in that dead store for 10 months, they are straight up now somehow people feeling fucking sorry for me for some reason, and I'm like, this is what, not even damn business unless you want to get shocked. I don't know. I forget. I did tell you guys that literally earlier today, some dude straight up came up to me and said that. So wait, what? Basically, it was like, Bo- yo, why are you so the first day? You ought to smile more than my kids when we got the one in the last seven years. Oh. Uh. So you're doing my fucking job getting paid and bailing out by the plot. Walking my ass home. Honestly, I don't even think there are going to be points when we get back to the audience I used to have. So I don't know. It's honestly, it sure as hell is feeling like that. Oh yeah, by the way guys, the fourth, we're honoring my grandmother. 
on stream. Yes, she actually watched the show like a few months before she passed. Who passed? Remember last year, Heather, of like a really rough week I had somewhat. Most of that was my grandmother's family. Aww. I never told you, really, because the only people who I told at the time were Zero and Dust. I didn't tell the go boy. I didn't tell Nessa, really. I didn't fucking tell him. All I knew is that people honestly just felt seriously bad. And honestly, I was fucking rough far off the bat. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh. There you go, the fucking service and shit. I have no idea how long since says my grandma passed away. I can't remember. Well, I'll tell you this, in like three more days, it's gonna be a year. And pretty much, I am leaving the house like around maybe 10 or whatever. I'm walking all the way out to the last place I was. I last spoke to. On the phone. On the side of a volleyball court. Yeah, not the most eventful place, but then again, too. I was that fucking terrified to sit foot in that hospital. That's how bad I was shaken up I was. Oh, I hate hospitals. I hate being in the waiting room. No, I mean, Heather, this was literally right after maybe three years in and out that she's been of hospitals, dialysis, fucking doctors left and right. Looking like nothing but skin and bone by the last time I saw her. What was the cause of I death? Was... Straight up couldn't get enough blood pumped out for dialysis anymore. It was three years of hospital visits back and forth. I had to witness more stuff. Like, oh, I mean, I've seen, I saw, and, and not, of course, none of us ever imagined my great grandma passing for her own mother. But she had kidney cancer, and it progressed. She noticed a mass on her leg that was hot to the touch. Her shin, actually. She had to have it, she had it removed and it had a stem in it. And of course, she was on chemo and she couldn't even keep a boost drink down. It was uh, awful really to see. A lot of her diet shrunk down. She wanted to put this amount of weight for the rest of her life. It was caught late because, well, she didn't feel any of the symptoms because she was always on pain meds for her R her R A. And she didn't really um do um like cancer checkups, so but yeah. Let's just say from like the fourth up until maybe the week after, I straight up still screamed and hid out fucking miserable I was. On here. Wait, it got bad. And going to the point where months later, my grandfather started to freaking, like, as of right now, like, he's in another nursing home. I don't know where. I haven't seen him in fucking weeks. And a lot of this was like months right after my grandmother passed. Okay, he's probably got a broken heart. Oh, he's got dementia. That's and that, that doesn't help either. Boy, me. He fucking hurt that whole week I saw. Him. Hell, even in the nursing home, it yeah. hurt. I was oh, lucky yeah. to even get in one conversation with him. Uh, so, we're just supposed to be watching a horror movie tomorrow on Oxy server, and I'm just like, do I watch it or come in here? Probably watch it. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about it all day. Like, 
mom brought it up. So if I'm not in here, you know why. That was more shaken up than usual before you guys know why. That's why I tell you two ahead of time. Whatever the hell is actually not asleep in this fucking broadcast, but yeah. Believe me, I lost two relatives during the pandemic. Because, yeah. My nan did pass with COVID, and my grandma probably told me that. Now you hey. mentioned oh after that. Oh my gosh! First- Chris, the Canadian, won't shut up about she will go full carry when she goes to Chicago in a few weeks, and I'm like, have I not said I'm not going? They're all gonna get a giant shut the fuck up from me at this point, Heather. I know it. I don't care about getting kicked. Oh, yeah. I need it. <laughs> I'm not, even, I'm not even kidding either. There's straight up points that right now I fucking fear to my grandfather. Like, what's ha- happening? Ever since all this shit happened. Like, I knew from that moment something fucked with me. I'm still thinking that. Fucking blows. Hey, hey. That whole suspension hurt me in one other way on here. Because I would have gotten a decent audience and I didn't remember that grandma and now basically it's gonna be fucking easier than the audience. And yes, she did watch this from my mom's phone in the fucking nursing home. Like maybe once or twice a week. Even my 19th birthday, whatever, was on here. She saw it. It was like one of the best screams I ever had. And I go from that to like seven fucking people. I'm not begging, it just hurts.
fine now. I'm opening it at all this because straight up a year ago, I fucking quit. At all. So, yeah. Jackson, whatever the fact you do or say is what I'm trying to freaking rant about my grandmother here. Hell, a year later, I'm still not in that good fucking place. Thanks to shitty people on here and fucking other crap. You got the no no it's a we I get that just to be you must be a absolute. Hey, well, I'm just gonna say this straight up because I don't care. Fuck Will still I hate him.
Well, I got voted for best accent in the Cannoli Mafia. Uh, I swear to God. Nicholas I have the strongest, I do, I mean. No, I meant if they put me in do like some stupid shit of best mutant. Yeah, I'm going to freaking tear my new one at this one. I don't care. Yes, I'm that shit. That and Issa said, you need to come to Washington because probably the air is so crisp. It's like the most crisp air. And I was like, first of all, in our mountains, which ain't far, which ain't far from here, it's pretty crisp. Especially when you go up elevations, it gets crisp. Oh, dang, that was a good. Right, I need anything else. I, you know, I don't give a shit. I'll get a break at this point. Slave, I'm going to get a fucking little on this shit. This group, yep. the yeah, the one with the music video where just things are everywhere. I think I'm gonna go on the cannoli stream because. I'm Hopefully we can get Jay Cobley to review and get his opinion. I just hear the only question. The message play yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I might just sit up here and try and get under Georgia's and pull around the shit. Uh, and it's not that I want to. No, it's not that I want to. But if you yeah, make it out, I'm going to story. Great important bunch of people. Yeah. Anyway, you want to give me the Definitely not going to make the most obvious comparison in history right now. <clears throat> I'm really not wanting to say it. What? Is it bad? <laughs> oh, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Oh, total. Huh? Oh, total. Haha, <laughs> what? What do you think I'm trying to say? I don't know. Blue dress, red shoes. Oh. Rally's on Kansas. Oh, Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. i Probably a switch models real quick. Advanced settings, please show up. Good. All right. Ah, my God, I'm so tired. Yeah, since I probably ain't got shit to do. No. Uh, trying to figure out. Yeah, I still have to dust off my fucking shelves and shit. Fuck. But there's not as so much dust, though, that's the thing. Yeah, you'll live. No, it's just... I didn't realize how much dust can get in this room so fast, and also the dust mites and all that shit. Ah. Wait, what the... Yeah. The mouth is just open. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? What in the hell is this? It's just the mouth is frozen. <laughs> the mouth is... Bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Alright, I'm going on. Wish me luck. Yeah. You stupid. What in the fuck happened to this? And if I need backup, I'll see what I can do. What in the fuck is with the. You know, hold on. I'm going to fix this thing going to George's. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead, either. I'm probably just gonna freaking fix this for like another five minutes.